part one of this segment, we saw how to measure the proper ratio of silicone to hardener. Now we are ready to mix and pour. Having added the right amount of hardener to the silicone, we are ready to mix. As you can see, it is a challenge to mix a very thick and a very thin liquid together. Fortunately, the hardener is dyed blue to help us see when the mix is complete. Incomplete mixing will result in incomplete curing. And unlike cured silicone, uncured silicone is very difficult to remove from the part. So great care is required in order to produce a thorough mix. We have been mixing for about two minutes and from the top it appears that the mixture is uniform and complete. However, a view from this side shows pure white, unmixed silicone. That is why we recommend the two cup mixing method. Once you have mixed in one cup, pour the contents into another cup. Now the center material, which is most mixed, goes against the sides of the new cup. And the unmixed silicone, which came from the sides of the old cup, goes into the center to be thoroughly mixed this time. Since silicone is so viscous, thorough mixing will create air bubbles that do not easily float to the surface. If these bubbles are next to the master part, they will produce defects in the mold and every cast part. Therefore, we cannot just pour the mixed silicone into the mold. Here is what bubbles will do to your part. If you look carefully at this cast part, you can see bumps here and also here. These are caused by defects in the mold where bubbles were formed, and they will require handwork on every cast piece. So bubble removal is critical. There are two methods for minimizing mold bubbles. First, let's look at the professional method. This method uses a vacuum chamber. A vacuum chamber such as this is available on our website and costs several hundred dollars. For the frequent mold maker, however, it is well worth the money in convenience and mold quality. It comes fully assembled and ready to plug in. Here's how to use it. Once the silicone is mixed, place it in the vacuum chamber. Make sure the container is at least four times larger than the volume of silicone. Place the acrylic cover on the chamber and make sure the valve is closed and turn on the pump. As the vacuum increases, the air in the silicone expands, causing the silicone to foam up. This is why a large container is required. After a couple of minutes, the bubbles suddenly pop and the foam collapses back down on itself. Keep running the pump for another six to seven minutes to remove even more air. After six to seven minutes, the silicone will still appear to have bubbles but this will not affect the mold quality. Turn off the pump and slowly open the valve. You will notice any remaining bubbles will suddenly disappear. You are now ready to pour the silicone. Slowly pour the silicone into the mold away from the part. Do not pour over the part as this might trap air in the mold. Allow the silicone to cure and your mold is complete. The other bubble removal method does not require any special equipment. Take a paper cup such as this and cut a one half inch diameter hole in the side near the bottom. Put a piece of tape over the hole. Now pour the mixed silicone into this cup. Place your mold on the floor below the edge of a table that is at least 30 inches high. Place the cup on the edge of the table. Remove the tape and as the silicone falls, move the mold so that the silicone lands in the bottom of the mold and not on the part. We sometimes call this the bombs away method. The way it works is that the silicone comes out of the cup in a one half inch stream. But as it falls, it stretches into a thin stream. As it stretches, the bubbles pop 
and what lands in the mold is almost completely bubble free. It is important to do this where there is no air movement since the slightest breeze will move the stream of silicone outside of the mold. So whether you use the professional vacuum chamber or the economical bombs away method, you can produce quality silicone molds. Plastic waste.